So what kind of plate boundaries and plate interactions occur? We've learned about the fact that there's plates. We've learned that the plates move. But there's actually sort of different kinds of interactions. They can kind of come together. They can go apart. And they can slide past each other. And it's actually more complex than that. But that's what we want to talk about. What happens at the plate boundaries? So here we have our picture, our guy driving up here. We've got a plate coming down here, kind of going underneath another. You know, where's the most, kind of the question that they think about a question, where's the most interesting place that you could be on a plate? Hmm. Well, let's see if we can figure that out. Well, there are a number of types of uh, words we're going to look at. Divergent boundaries, rift valleys, convergent plate boundaries, subduction, transform, and transform faults. OK, so let's see, take a look. The first thing I want to talk about is called a divergent plate boundary. Now, a divergent place bound, plate boundary today is when the plates come apart. Notice we've kind of seen this picture before. The plates are moving apart. So if you've got plates moving apart, it's a divergent plate boundary. Okay. If you're a divergent thinker, that means that you think differently. The classic example of this is the Rift Valley of Africa. What you've got going on is that you've got one plate going this way, essentially Africa, and this small section right here um, of Africa going apart. All right. So let's take a look at an animation that illustrates this right here. So let's do that now. now that this is a neat little animation from AGI that they sent to us. And here comes your future separation in the Rift Valley of Eastern Africa. So you can see how that piece just broke off and will eventually go off across the Indian Ocean. That was cool. And of course, you probably realize Mr. and Mrs. Mosier were um, narrating that. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's talk about a convergent plate boundary. Now, convergent plate boundary is a little more complex because there's more than one kind of convergent plate boundary. All right, there is here we have a, a oceanic crust. Remember, there's two kinds of crust we learned last time. Here's the ocean, and here's the continent. And they are now moving together. So this is actually an ocean continental plate boundary. The other one that's illustrated here, here we have an ocean and an ocean. See, both oceanic plates. The oceanic plates are colored kind of grayish here, I guess. And they are coming together, ocean, ocean. So we have an ocean, 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 ocean plate boundary. And here we have an ocean to continent plate boundary. So there are two different varieties, and because what happens is you get different kinds of forms, which is our next podcast. But here we're going to get islands, and here we're going to get mountains on the land. So a different kind of a thing occurs there, okay? And you kind of can see them. Here's the, here's the ocean-ocean convergent. Here what happens is that this, um, the lithosphere, and the ocean crust is technically just from here to here. The lithosphere, though, goes underneath, okay? And it's trying to hit the continent. Oh, no, pardon me. This is the ocean-ocean. OK, I knew that. And then the ocean, and they dive underneath. And then what you start getting is you get these islands. We call them island arcs. Here they are. Island arcs forming when you have ocean-ocean convergence. Now, if we do the ocean continental convergence, um, by the way, one of them goes underneath here because it's more dense. Remember, this is made up, the ocean here is made of basalt, where this is made of, of granite right here, the o co continent which is less dense, so the more dense thing sinks. And as it sinks, it then creates um, volcanoes on the land. This is, for example, the Mount St. Helens eruption um, going on there. We also can have a continent and a continent converge. So there's actually three. Um, actually, I didn't mention the third one there earlier. But we've got continent that, and a continent. The continent and a continent can come up. And here we have an island. And then, boom, you, get the, you just get big mountains. This is the highest mountains in the world. This is kind of where India collided with um, um, with Asia. All right, actually speaking of that, let's watch a short video clip of that very same thing where we see India colliding with, uh, with Asia. And we're going to see it with Mr. and Mrs. Mo giving the uh, animation or the uh, talk over. Now that India, as it approaches Asia, coming across the uh, ocean from this little perspective. And here she comes. when they crash together, there's India zooming through the ocean. Watch what happens when it hits into that little soft underbelly of China right there. Okay, not that. There's our collision with India and China, and look how it pushes a ridge up. Of course, we'll have another little picture of that, I imagine. If you look right here, we'll go to the next one and have a look at 
the mountains that rise when that collision takes place. All right, here comes India for real this time. It's crunching into China and pushing up these mountains as it goes. The ocean just disappeared. That mountain in the foreground there was Mount Everest. Okay, not officially, but Mount Everest. And on to the next section. That was cool. Oh, my word. Phew. All right, subduction. Now, this is a pretty cool concept. Okay, subduction. Now, the word subduction comes from the word sub. The sub means underneath, like a submarine travels underneath the water. Marine, by the way, means water. So submarine, or actually marine technically means ocean, so under the ocean. All right, so here we have um, the oceanic plate. Now, remember I said earlier, it is more dense than the continental plate. Remember, this is made of graphite, where this is made of basalt. And so what happens is, is it goes underneath, because it's more dense, it creates a couple of interesting features. It'll create a trench, and it'll create mountains, particularly volcanic mountains. This is what's happening um, on the coasts of both North and South America. Subduction is where um, one plate goes underneath another plate, okay? That's pretty cool. And ocean continent, you know, I don't think I have this one actually, so too bad. Okay, transform plate boundary. This is the, the last kind. Transform is where they slide past each other. The classic example is um, across, across the coast of California. In California, there's the San Andreas Fault. And in that fault, you've got one going one way down to the south and to the east, and then one going up to the north and to the west. And of course, that means they're sliding past each other. And that's what a transform plate boundary is. It's a little more complex than that, I mean quite a bit more, because we've actually other fracture zones. This is also a transform boundary, and this one is too. But then they've kind of split. It's kind of confusing, because this becomes the subduction zone. Because right here is Mount St. Helens. So here we have the subduction zone, because the continent, it's not a, a either or. But we've also, you know, it's just more complex than what we've talked about. All right, let's see a cool animation of transform plate boundaries. You know, I'm not sure I had that one, but oh well, if I did, <laughs> I'm not sure. Hey, let's get at some content. So we've got all the geo words out. Let's talk about how the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger. Hey, guess what's happening to the Atlantic Ocean? So this is 90 million years ago. You might notice something here is that um, Asia, Eurasia, uh, Europe and Asia, and North America were almost like touching, right? And so the same thing with South America and, uh, or South America and Africa, right? Well, if we go next page, 50 million years, oh! The gap here is, is, well, it's gotten bigger. Mm -hmm. It's because the continents are drifting. You see what's happening is right down through the middle of here is a divergent plate boundary. It means this plate is moving this way and this plate is moving that way, which means that, well, it's pushing them apart. Okay? And so that's what's happening. So we can see little by little what's happening. And by the way, we should look back here. By the way, right here while we're at it, um, that was for that divergent plate boundary. Look at India right here. All right, and here's Eurasia. Guess what? Here we have a continent and a continent coming together. So let's go backwards. Actually, it isn't even there. Well, actually, here's India. Here's Eurasia. Bing. India right here. Eurasia. Bing. Crash. Mountains right here. Himalayan mountains, which we talked about earlier. Okay. Other uh, features that are different, like look at Australia right here. All right, boom. Australia. Oop, oh, gotten further north. Oop, oh, boom. Gotten further north. There you go. Get the idea. All right. So. How does that relate to trenches? Now, the thing that's pretty interesting about this is that trenches are formed when you have ocean-ocean plate boundaries. All right, so when you have an ocean-ocean plate boundary, that means they're converging, I mean, coming together. You've got a plate here and a plate here. They're kind of coming together kind of in this direction. And what happens is, is it creates two things, actually. It'll create an island arc, and it creates a trench. The deepest trench in the world is actually the Mariana Trench. And I believe the uh, Challenger... Um, deep hole is like 34,000 feet deep. Very, very deep. This is, by the way, here's the Philippines, Japan, if kind of near near Philippines, Papua New Guinea. Here's Australia down here if you want to kind of get your maps kind of going. These are the deepest parts. In fact, interesting, this, is, uh, this part of the ocean is deeper than the tallest mountain. So Mount Everest is not as tall as the deepest spot in the ocean. All right, California here. Here again, we can just talk some more about some transform faults. Just... Uh, just note that they're moving in opposite directions. A lot of people think that California is going to break off. Well, it's actually just this portion of California, which also includes parts of Baja, Mexico, that's actually going to break off someday. Most of California will stick around.
So here's an interesting question too. A lot of people, we want to know this because heck, we live in the Rocky Mountains. Where did the Rockies come from? Where did the Rocky Mountains come from? Well, well to do that, I think we should listen to Mr. and Mrs. Moe talk about that and look at a cool animation. So here we go with the Rockies getting burst. Okay, if you notice on this animation, okay, this subduction zone, I want you to notice the angle of this subduction zone. This is a really shallow angle on this subduction zone. Um, it's not as dramatic as other subduction zones. Um, and this is an ancient, again, an ancient subduction zone that has taken place. Um, but this subduction zone came in at a very shallow angle instead of that steep angle. So because of that, instead of causing volcanoes, it actually forced uplift in the middle of the continent. To summarize what they essentially said is that you had a subduction zone, but instead of most subduction zones, they subduct at a very steep angle. All right, and then this is a continent and an ocean. But what we've got is, so this is the standard right here, right? But what happened with the with the formation of the Rockies, it was a very shallow one, and so that created, so here's the middle of the continent. See, one of the problems with the Rocky Mountains is that they're in the middle of a continent. Almost all mountain ranges are not in the middle of the continent, but the edges, but it was much, in this, uh, much uh, shallower of a subduction zone. See how this is a steep angle here, and this right here is a shallow angle, and that caused some uplift of the mountains right here, and which created the Rocky Mountains, which we live next to. Now, a suture zone. Interesting. What's the suture? Well, a suture, if I make a suture, if a, if a doctor makes a suture, he's going to stitch you together because you got cut, right? Well, the suture zone is where two parts come together, and they're the suture zone. They tend, and here is the suture zone right here between India and Eurasia. And what's here, of course, is the big feature here are the largest mountains in the world, the Himalayan Mountains, and the Himalayan Mountains are well, they're tall, they're really big. And they are being sutured together. So um, it's an interesting thing as you study the rocks. The rocks of Asia, or pardon me, of, uh, of India, are very different than the rocks of China. And now they're all getting mixed together when they're we're at the mix zone, if you will. Okay. And here's a better picture, probably, of that. In the suture zone, you can kind of see where the mountains begin. Right. Boom. So uh, that's a really cool picture. I like this picture. All right. And you can also see it's true for Afghanistan, Pakistan. All these mountains are all through here. Afghanistan is an important part of our world politically, geopolitically right now. Okay. Um, yeah, this one is just another picture to help us understand the concept here is we have continent and a continent uh, converging together and then notice interesting thing here is we've got uh, granite intrusive that's the fact that some of the granite that was formed under the ground gets lifted up the thing that's interesting to make a note here is that there's also say they say folded sedimentary rocks well these sedimentary rocks you don't really learn about sedimentary rocks but the rocks that are formed underwater well you know what you find at the top of Mount Everest they find marine fossils fishy fossils yeah fishies uh, how did that happen? Well, it's because the, the mountain was once underwater. Okay, it's kind of weird to think of fish, ocean fishes, on the top of tall mountains. That's true in South America as well. Uh, the top of the high, those high mountains, they find fishies, dead fishies, fossilized fishies. Okay, and then here is uh, another, uh, just a classic example. We have a subduction zone, an ocean, and an ocean, and we get this. Because of this, this is kind of creating some friction, kind of like if you rub your hands together. When you rub your hands together, they get warm. Well, now we're rubbing rocks together, it gets really real hot, and it rises the magma, and of course, then we get these island arcs, these small little volcanics that happen. All right, let's talk briefly about Iceland. Iceland's actually an interesting place, is because uh, a lot of people think Iceland, actually, you know, Iceland, by the way, is green. Interesting thing. And uh, Greenland is white. Hmm, okay. Don't, don't ask. Okay, <laughs> you can. It's just uh, the way they named it. Here's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Remember, this is a divergent plate boundary right here where they are div diverging. And Iceland essentially is um, a spot where the, um, it, the lava has risen too far enough that it's created an island. Interesting thing is, of course, Iceland is being split apart by um, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it's just, boom, going further and further apart. Interesting thing about Iceland, even though it's, it's very green, one of the reasons it's green is there's so much thermal activity from the volcanoes. It produces, by the way, kind of Hawaiian-type volcanoes, very oozing, or very, very high viscosity, or uh, low viscosity uh, lava. And so what they do is they, a lot of people heat their houses with that. They just 
kind of dig a hole and they get a heat pump and then they can warm their house in the winter because it can get cold um, even though it's um, it's green because there's so much energy from the volcanoes my guess is is that if you lived over here on the edge where there's not as much volcanic it's probably colder than if you lived uh, closer to the center of the mid-ocean ridge although it might be more interesting to live here because well it would be more interesting because it would be near all the volcanoes so maybe you're constantly fighting lava flows I don't know uh, never been to Iceland I'd love to go I think it'd be very cool so hey that's the podcast for the day I am finito finished we are done we'll see you in Kalasi